Hi, thank you for joining this video. I'm Clara Rodriguez and I'm going to present our work on the scalable verification of zero knowledge protocols, also by Miguel Isabel and Albert Rubio from the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. First, I want to introduce the problem that we address in our work. Zero knowledge protocols are a kind of cryptographic protocols where there are two different parties, the prover and the verifier. In these protocols, the prover wants to convince the verifier about the validity of a statement without revealing any extra information beyond the fact that the statement is true. These protocols have to, have to fulfill three different properties. The first two are completeness and soundness. Completeness requ requires that in case the, on the prover is being honest, then he has to be able to convince the verifier. Soundness means that in case he's lying, the verifier is going to be able to detect this. The third extra property and the one that characterizes these protocols is zero knowledge. This property states that from all this process, the only thing that the verifier is going to learn is that the statement is true. Most zero knowledge protocols model the statements being verified as an arithmetic circuit satisfiability problem. In this case, the statement that the prover is going to convince the verifier is that he knows some private inputs and has correctly executed a circuit. In order to generate the product, in order to generate the proof, what the prover does is first take the public and private inputs and execute the circuit, generating a proof. Then he gives this proof to the verifier along with the public inputs and the output, and the verifier is able to detect if the prover knows the private inputs and has correctly executed the circuit. But the zero knowledge comes from the fact that from all this process, the verifier is not going to learn anything about the private inputs. The circuits that are used in order to model this statement are relatively simple. They can only contain two kinds of gates, multiplication gates and addition gates. In order to represent these circuits, the zero knowledge protocols usually represent them using constraint systems. But this constraint system has some have some requirements. They can only use quadratic constraints in order to model the circuits. In this case, we are using two intermediate signals, but intermediate signal one and intermediate signal two, in order to represent the intermediate values that may appear in the circuit. Other, po <clears throat> other possible representations, as the one that we have here, are not valid because it uses a non-quadratic constraint that it is not allowed in these um, zero knowledge protocols. In our work, uh, the problem that we focus is the verification of these constraint systems. One of the most typical bugs in zero knowledge protocols is to not include all the necessary constraints in order to correctly model the statement that is being verified. These bugs are known as under constraint bugs and they are typical of languages as Circom, Halo 2, or Noir, where the user can explicitly define which are the constraints that are going to be part of the constraint system. Under constraint bugs can be critical, as a malicious prover can exploit these vulnerabilities in order to generate a verifiable proof that it is not correctly modeling the statement. Nowadays, there are not many tools for verifying these constraint systems. On one hand, we have tools like the flagging spec of the Circom compiler, CKAPE, and Circom spec that are based on performing syntactic checks. These tools look for typical patterns that may indicate the presence of another constraint bug, but are not able to detect more complex bugs as long as they don't fit these typical patterns. On the other hand, we have tools like PICUS that perform semantic check. This tool is able to detect more complex bugs that present some scalability issues and cannot handle huge circuits. Moreover, I would like to point out that existing tools for the automatic verifications of this constraint system cannot handle the specification given in terms of preconditions and postconditions. So our goal is to introduce this kind of tool. In order to do so, we have to address two different challenges. The first one is that the arithmetic circuits are defined over large finite fields, which makes more difficult to reason about their constraints. The second challenge is that these circuits can be huge, and being modeled by circuits contain, containing thousands or even millions of constraints. 
in our work, we have developed the tool Cyber that is able to verify these constraint systems. Our tool addresses these two challenges as follows. For the large finite fields, we have introduced a set of transformation and detection rules that allow us to minimize the number of nonlinear operations that appear in the constraint system. For the second challenge, we have introduced a modular reasoning that reduces the number of constraints that we have to take into account in each one of the step, steps of the process. We have implemented our tool and applied it to real world circuits. We have been able to verify many of them and also to find bugs that couldn't be found using existing techniques. In our work, we focus on the verification of circuits written using the Circon language. Circom is one of the most used languages for modeling circuits in order to be used in zero knowledge protocols. Here you, uh, you have the link of the GitHub repository, so you can try it if you're interested. So where does Circom appears in the process of generating a zero knowledge proof? First, it appears as a language for modeling, for modeling arithmetic circuits. And secondly, as a compiler that we can use in order to generate both a symbolic representation of the circuit given in terms of the constraint system, and also an executable file that simulates the behavior of the circuit that can be used in order to generate a witness. In order to work at these two levels, Circom includes different instructions to work in the different uh, representations. First, in order to work just at the symbolic level, Circom includes the equality operator. In this case, what we are doing is to jet as the, as the constraint into the constraint system. As, we, as the constraint system is going to be used to generate a zero knowledge proof, it, this constraint has to be quadratic, which means that in this case, if we try to include a non-quadratic expression at the left, the compiler is going to return an error. To work just at the computational level, we include the singular operator. In this case, we don't have the extra requirement on, of only using quadratic expressions because what we are doing is to yet add the, this line of code into the executable file. We are not adding any constraints into the constraint system. And finally, we have the double arrow operator that combines both operations. In this case, we are both adding the constraint into the constraint system and adding this, this assignment into the executable code. Again, in this case, we can only use quadratic expressions. When we are using Circom, we want to generate two equivalent representations of the same circuit. So it makes sense to just use every time the double arrow operator. However, this is not always possible. Why? Because when we want to express more complex behavior, we have to combine the uses of the three different operators. Let's see an example. Imagine the following situation. We want to design a circuit that checks if an input is zero or not. This way, the expected behavior is, is that in case in is zero, out has to be one, and in any other case, out has to be zero. So a typical uh, solution that beginners try when they are using Circom is the circuit that we have here, where we are using the double arrow operator to add this comparison. However, this solution is not valid valid and the circum compiler returns an error when we try to compile it. Why? Because the constraint that we are trying to add is non-quadratic. A typical fix that beginners try is the solution that we have here, when we are substituting the double arrow operator by just a single arrow. This solution compiles and everything looks fine. However, this is not valid and this is actually really dangerous. Why? because we are not adding any constraint to the constraint system. So any possible assignment for the input and output can be used in order to generate a verifiable proof. The constraint system that we are generating is completely empty. The actual solution for this problem is the one that we have here, where we are combining the use of the single arrow, double arrow, and equality operators. In this case, the two representations that we are generating are equivalent and have the expected behavior. For example, we can see that in case the output, the input is zero, the first constraint forces the output to be one. And in case the input is not zero, the second one forces output to be zero. 
As we have seen in this example, the Circon compiler doesn't check if the two representations that we have generated are equivalent. It is the responsibility of the user. In this way, one of the most typical bugs that may appear in Circon programs is to not include all the necessary constraints in order to correctly model the statement, which is known as an under-constraint bug. That is, the newest version of Circom has included the use of tags in order to try to enhance the security of their circuit. Tags are annotations that users may include in order to indicate what are the expected properties that the signals of the circuit have to satisfy. For example, in this case, we are stating that we expect the output of the circuit to have a binary value, either 0 or 1. However, the Circon compiler only performs syntactic checks over these tags. This means that if an input signal has a tag, then the compiler is going to check that it can only be assigned to a signal that also contains this tag. However, the compiler doesn't perform any semantic checks. So, for example, solutions, that's the one that we have here, are valid. And though there is no constraint, check, uh, actually forcing the output signal to be binary. Now I'm going to present the intuition of how our approach works. So the idea is once we are given a circuit, what we do is to use a language based on pre and post conditions to state what is the expected behavior of the circuit. So for example, in this case, for the, for the template is zero, what we do is to state that the expected value of the output is this check-in. We can also state what is the expected behavior of each one of the tags of the circuit. Here we are indicating that any signal that has the tag binary is expected to have a value between 0 and 1. Once we have this specification, we try to model to verify it. In order to do that, we consider the problem as a satisfiability query. This means that we, that we consider the constraints that define the circuit, P, and the target property, that are the, the specification that we want to verify. Then we check if there exists any solution of the constraint system that doesn't satisfy the specification. However, we have to consider the following challenge. This constraint system that we want to uh, check if it's satisfiable or not contains multiple nonlinear operations defined over a finite field. Existing SMT solvers, as set three, cannot handle this kind of operations efficiently and time out even when considering this really small circuit. So, in order to enhance the performance of existing SMT solvers, we have introduced a set of transformation and deduction rules that allow us to minimize the number of these operations. These are some of the rules that we use. For example, you can see here that in the case of the second rule, what we are doing is substituting multiplication a multiplied by b equals to zero to either one a or b have to be zero. In the case of the first rule, what we're doing is substitute the modular expression operations by this expression, where we, are, where we are using the variable key to substitute the module operation. In this case, we are also computing some bounds for the expression in order to limit the values of this, the, that the free variable key can take, which can enhance the performance of the solvers, especially if we can find some tight bounds from the, for the expression. In this case, after applying these rules, we obtain this equivalent constraint system, where the, the constraints are relatively more simple. For example, we have substituted the multiplication operation by this one. Existing SMT solvers can solve this system almost immediately and return the output unsat. This means that the circuit satisfies the specification. In order to handle the second challenge, that it is the huge size of the constraint systems, we have, in, we have taken advantage of the hierarchical structure in which circuits are defined in order to develop a modular approach. So the idea is instead of considering all the constraints of the, of the circuit all at once, what we do is to try to verify each one of the components individually. To do so, what we do is to abstract the children components of each one of them using the specification. So the idea is, for example, in case we are considering this more complex circuit, 
instead of adding the constraint of the subcomponents is zero, what we do is substitute this child run contained system by the specification of this uh, subcomponent and just add this expression. In this case, in this case again, we are able to verify that the circuit is safe. If we remove some of the necessary constraints of this example, we, our solver can also reason about it and return the input set, giving us a counterexample that it is a possible solution of the constraint system that doesn't satisfy the specification. We have implemented our approach in a publicly available tool called Cyber and apply it to real world circuits. These are some of the benchmarks that we have tried. They are real-world benchmarks that are widely used, and they contain huge circuits, some of them containing 11 million of constraints. In the case of the other libraries, CircleLib and CircleMexa, and the project Dark Forest, they are currently in production, while Phil Stark is still in development. We have used our tool in order to verify the circuits of these libraries. We have been able to verify most of them. For the ones where we obtain a timeout, they were, in most of the cases, modeling mathemat complex mathematical structures as elliptic curves. We have been able to find some critical bugs in these projects. Some of them couldn't be found using previous approaches. This is a summary of the experimental results. As you can see, we have been able to verify most of the circuits, and the number of timeouts is relatively small. This is a simplified version of one of the bugs that we have found in the Dark Forest library. In, the in this case, it is a circuit that models an intercept division between two values. It receives an input, the dividend and the divisor, and computes the remainder and the quotient of this operation. However, the implementation in the Dark Forest project is buggy. In this case, if we check using cyber uh, if the circuit satisfies the expected behavior, we observe that it produces a counterexample that it indicates a possible solution of the circuit that it is not modeling the expected behavior. As you can see, in this case, the remainder is taking a negative value that it is what it is not what we expect. In order to solve this issue, the solution is to include the constraints that are currently uh, commented. Now we are forcing the reminder to be positive, and in this case, the circuit, once we add the constraints, can be verified using cyber. To sum up, in our work, we have introduced a language and a tool for specifying the expected behavior of the circuit in terms of preconditions and postconditions and check if it is satisfied. If it is satisfied. In order to do so, we applied transformation and deduction rules in order to minimize the number of nonlinear operations that we have to consider, and also modular reasoning in order to minimize the number of constraints that we have to consider at each one of the steps of the process. In the future, we would like to extend our approach to other languages and formats. Currently, Cyber only works for circum circuits, but we would like to consider other circuits in languages as Noir and Halo 2 and new formats as Plong. We would also like to extend Cyber to be able to consider circuits given just in terms of plane constraints. In order to do that, we have to extract what is the modular structure of these circuits from just the plane constraint system. And finally, we would like to extend Cyber to work on extension fields that are starting to be used in zero knowledge protocols in languages as PIL. As I said, Cyber is, you know, is publicly available. This is the link of the GitHub repository where you can find it. Thank you very much and goodbye.